Welcome to this presentation of the analysis of the past international financial reporting standards, how frequently each popular IFI has been tested in the past 10 years in the SBR exam. I've been teaching the SBR for more than 10 years, and uh, my pass rate for the SBR paper for the ACCA is quite high. So in this presentation, I'm going to share with you the research of how frequently each IFIS has been tested in the past 10 years. So let's see then. Number 26 is the IAS number 41, Agriculture Accounting. In the past 10 years, it's been tested three times. So usually, according to my experience, that the Agriculture Accounting will be combined with the IFAS 13 fair value measurements to be tested in the exam. Number 25. The International Accounting Standards Number 28, Investments and Associates, has been tested four times over the past 10 years, okay, so in a group consolidation. But it's very important that you bear in mind that nowadays in the question one, it is highly likely that each of the consolidation standards, for example, is the IFRS 10, Consolidated FS, and the IFRS 11, Joint Arrangement, including the IS 28, for the equity accounting and also the uh, classification of the associates uh, may be tested more frequently. Number 24 is the ICE, 20, uh, ICE 24 related party disclosures. So it's been tested five times over the past 10 years. But do make sure that you understand that if a company pays money to the director in the form of remuneration, for example, that could be an example of the related party that needs to be disclosed according to ICE number 24 there. Number 23, okay, is the boring costs. It's been tested five times over the past 10 years. So make sure they understand what sort of element that should be capitalized as the capitalized boring costs, as the capitalized interest expense in other words. So make sure they identify what will be the qualifying assets and the time period to capitalize those borrowing costs. That will be very important there. Now, number 22. Seven times been tested. Ice number 21. The effects of changes in foreign exchange rates. So make sure that you understand for the single transaction for the foreign exchange rate differences, so we will go into the PNO, for example. However, for group consolidation, so for the group uh, for the group consolidation, on the other hand, for the foreign exchange rate differences, we bring that into reserve. So make sure that you're ready for that. According to my experience, sometimes the foreign exchange rates may also be combined with the IS number twelve income taxes. Uh, when the examiner tests you about the deferred tax treatment, if uh, you are given the foreign exchange rates example for that, so make sure that you understand which rates they're going to use and to make a comment as well. Number 21, again, seven times, same as number 20, IS number 40, investment properties in the SBR exam. So you need to make sure that you understand for the investment property, the definition of the investment property is the property that is held by the business for capital gain or and for rental purposes. Okay, so it's not for the business's own use. Uh, with the gains losses changes in fair value, we put that into the PNO. Okay, for the investment property, and of course you can use the cost model as well, but that's quite rare when you are recognizing the property as the investment property one. So also do make sure in the eyes number 40, when there's a change from one uh, uh, element to another, so for example, changes from the pp e to the investment property, or vice versa, or change from the inventory to investment property and vice versa, and make sure they so you know the accounting treatment for that. ICE 20 tested seven times for the government grant. Okay, so make sure they understand the difference between the capital and the, the revenue grant. So the capital grant is the grant provided by the government to assist you, uh, to assist you 
when you are purchasing the piece of PPNA, for example, property plant equipment. For the revenue grant, on the other hand, you are saying that you are paying for some expenditures, for example, the training cost and the R&D, and the government decides to help you out and to provide you with certain amounts of money. So that would be the revenue grant. And of course, the treatment, so most likely, you'll be using the deferred income approach by recognising the monies that you receive from the government directly into the deferred income liability, if you like, and to release that over the life of the contract, or the per the conditions set by the government, or perhaps by matching the expenses when you're utilising that particular piece of PPNA, and by recognising the depreciation expenses each year, and then you're going to be releasing that deferred income liability into income to match against that expense that you recognise, so you can recognise profit as a result. So that's number 20, I's 20 there. IFAS 13 is number 19, it's the fair value measurement, so make sure that you understand that there will be three ways to determine the fair value, for example, it's the market approach, income approach and cost approach, and also three levels of inputs, level 1, level 2 and level 3, and you need to be able to discuss them in the exam. Number 18, the past 10 years, the joint arrangement has been tested 10 times, so make sure you're ready for that. So, for example, the term, uh, how to determine uh, the operation will be the joint operation or joint venture. And, of course, for a joint venture, the accounting for that will be according to the IS number 28, not from the IFRS number 11. Because IFRS number 11 is simply be the recognition of the operation, where not that will be a joint operation or joint venture, but the accounting treatment for that, for example, for a joint venture, be to use the equity accounting according to the IAS number 28 associate. Now, IFAS number 8 as the 17th uh, operating segment has been tested 11 times during the past 10 years, so make sure that you recognize that you understand the IFAS 8 is a disclosure requirement. How to identify the operating segment, how to determine that whether or not the operating segment will be reportable or not. So by applying the 10% principle, as well as the 75% principle in your exam. And the examiner may be creative in this particular area by testing you in the past so that where not some of the central costs uh, in the group would be allocated to different operating segments within the group. And the answer is it will be done on a very discretionary or arbitrary basis. So make sure you stay ready for that. Number 16, 12 times for the IFRS number 2 share-based payment. But in the recent past exam questions, I've seen that the share-based payment or the SBP will not be tested in a very technical manner. So make sure they understand there will be two types of the SBP in particular. So for example, there will be a share options and there would be the share appreciation right. For share options, of course, you're going to bring this balance into a reserve for the share appreciation rights, on the other hand, will be settled in cash. So you're going to recognise the liability each and every year. You also need to recognise, you need to also understand the, the value of the share option and the share appreciation rights will be quite different. One is on the grant date and one is at each reporting period. Okay, so that's very important then in there. Another one. IFRS 5, non-current asset held for sale and discontinued operations. So make sure they understand the criteria when determining the asset held for sale by transforming the non-current asset into the current asset and also need to know the accounting treatment for that. So uh, most likely there will be impairment losses to be recognised for non-current asset held for sale anyway. For discontinued operations, Make sure they understand, first of all, the presentation requirements is the single line of the cash flows as well as the profit on, uh, on the face of the uh, statement of cash flows as well as the p &L. And also, uh, when should we determine that will be the dis discontinued operations? Uh, in our course, we've got the first criteria and one of the three situations they can classify that as the discontinued operations. And, Therefore, the disclosure requirements with the detailed disclosures about the discontinued operations result uh, in terms of its performance and profit and make sure they're ready for that. 
Number 14 then is the IVAS3 business combinations during the past 10 years, tested 12 times. So make sure they understand how to calculate goodwill and also how to determine whether or not the transaction is simply be an asset acquisition or business combination. It will be uh, the concentration test in the IFRS number three there. IFRS number one is the first time adoption, it's tested 13 times. Number 12 is ICE number 19 for a defined benefit. Make sure they're ready for that defined benefit. Very, very important uh, for a pension accounting. Okay? So there will be defined contribution plan and defined benefit plan to pay to the staff who is going to retire soon. And that will be the retirement benefits that you need to be aware of. Now, another standard is the ICE number 34. So I make a specific note here. In the SBA exam, you need to notice that the ICE number 34 will not be separately tested. But of course, that the examiner may give you an interim financial statement. So in effect, that the examiner is testing you to the ICE number 34, the interim financial statements knowledge. So make sure that you uh, look at the question from the December 2018, as well as the, the question December uh, 2017 uh, for the similar types of questions that may come up uh, in the exam. Number 10, again 14 times, and also number 9, ICE 12, yeah, it deferred taxes 14 times tested. ICE number 8, 15 times for the ICE number 10, <coughs> it meant after the reporting period. So again, in the SBI exam, in my experience, <coughs> that the ICE number 10 may not be separately tested in the exam. But um, you may be given some sort of transactions that may occur after the financial reporting period. And if that's the case then, you may be required to discuss about the accounting treatment for that particular event, so whether or not it should be disclosed in the year one's account, or it should be adjusted for in the year's, year one's account. So make sure so you're ready for that too. Uh, make sure they will not lose the easy marks for the event after the reporting period. Number seven then is the IFRS number 16 for leases. Uh, in the SBI exam, that the examiner will heavily focus on the strategic part of the leases. So for example, by whether or not this transaction should be recognised as the lease transaction or be a service contract and so on. And of course, in the previous studies, for example, in the financial reporting study, in the F7 study, for example, that the IFRS number 16 leases, the heavy focus would be on the measurement of the lease liability as well as the rights of use asset. But in the SBI exam, you're more likely to discuss about, for example, the recognition of the lease contract and also the modification of the lease contract as well. So more of the advanced issues may be tested in the SBR. And of course, ICE number 16 will be the easy marks been tested 17 times almost each and, and every sitting uh, in the SBI exam for the pp &E and also for the, uh, for the applications because the examiner may set a question, for example, typically, typically in the question three uh, in the SBI exam and testing you, bringing all of the asset standards, for example, it's the ICE number 16, pp and &E, it's the ICE number 40, investment properties, the ICE number 38, intangible assets and so on. So make sure stay ready. Number five then, 17 times again, for the earnings per share. So make sure that you notice that the earnings per share will be uh, an example of a disclosure requirement, and that's enough. Eyes number two then, inventory is tested 18 times, so make sure that you will not lose the easy marks. Eyes number eight, tested 19 times for the accounting policies and estimates and for the changes of those and the correction of errors, so make sure you're ready for the change in accounting policy. That would be an example of the retrospective adjustment uh, accounting treatments that would need to be applied and prospective accounting uh, adjustment for, would be applied for the changes in accounting estimates, for example, changes in the useful life of the asset, changes in the uh, this estimated staff turnover rate for the share-based payment scheme, and so on. Very importantly, yes, you notice that IFRS 9 tested 21 times in the SBI exam, 
So make sure that you will cover every bits and pieces, for example, the financial asset, financial liabilities, and also you need to cover, so for example, the impairment of the financial asset, and very importantly is the derivative part, okay? So for example, the fair value hedge, cash flows hedge, and so on. IFRS 15, yeah, very important, 23 times for the top one, okay, for the revenue recognition. So in the SBR exam, unlike what we've seen in the financial reporting standard, uh, financial reporting exam, the SBR would heavily focus on the revenue recognition standard. So make sure that you are ready for that. Okay, so for example, the variable considerations uh, and so on, and to whether not to recognise that as the recognised uh, the revenue uh, from the principal's point of view or from the agent's point of view and so on. So make sure they're ready. So this here is not very um, exhaustive because as you can see, I've provided you with the important IFIs and sometimes that, for example, the uh, ICE number 38, times bar and so on, uh, they also come up. And of course, very, very important standard for the intangible asset from the ICE number 38. So that ends our section for the IFRS are tested, how frequent of them are tested in the SBI exam for the past 10 years. I hope you find this section useful and be careful of the SBI exam and to make sure so you allocate enough time to cover the most important IFRS first of all before the less important IFRS and make sure that practicing past exam questions will be very useful and helpful to help you achieve a pass in your XBI exam. I look forward to seeing you then. Bye bye. APC, accounting for your future.